happy holidays and welcome to In the Cool of the Day in today's segment, Keeping It Real with Don and David Burks. Today we'll be speaking with a multi-talented veteran who allows God to use her to bring love, laughter, and hope to a wide range of audiences. Mm -hmm. She has grown from an accomplished actor to award-winning writer, director, producer, speaker, and coach. She has produced and directed both her own original pieces and other artists' works for more than 25 years. Mm -hmm. She has appeared with such renowned artists as Vicki Winans, John P. Key, Reverend Timothy Wright, Jonathan Slocum, Broderick Rice, Douglas E. Doug, and others. As well, she has appeared on Amateur Night at the Apollo. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Rosie Rogers to our show. Thank you, thank you. It's so nice to have you here today. It's great to have you here. Thank you, I'm happy to be here today. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna share with the audience a little bit about how we, how we came to meet. Uh -huh. um, one of our friends has, is in your place, Yes. so Mr. Clyde Forcer, uh, and he had invited us to one of them about a year ago, I guess, I think yep. it was on Valentine's. Yes. Yeah. It was probably it was. about a year or so ago. And, um, and we thoroughly enjoyed that. I think you were granny in that play, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love granny. <laughs> yeah, granny was really Gracious good. Yeah. 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 yeah, crazy granny. <laughs> yeah, she was definitely fun to watch. Mm. And then recently, um, you guys did another play. Yes. Um, which was Life After Love After Death, mm -hmm. uh, which is about um, suicide or attempted suicide. And yes. so today we're gonna be talking a little bit about a serious topic, yes. but, um, but I wanna little, know a little bit more about you, Miss Rosie Rogers first and Crazy <laughs> Granny, right? And how Crazy <laughs> Granny came to yeah. be. So, um, so tell us um, a, a little bit about that. Well, let's back up first because when I was reading your bio, mm -hmm. um, we kind of noticed that you were you started serving the Lord when you were young. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was at the age of eight. Okay. And uh, I think David kind of related to that a little bit, right? Yeah. When I was reading the bio, I was like, wow, the Lord accepting the Lord at age eight. Um, I remember w way back when, when I was eight years old, and you know, I was living with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. You know, we mm -hmm. went to a lot of revivals, and you know, I, I accepted the Lord really early in my life, also. So uh -huh. it's, it's a very grateful thing that you know God yes. comes into your life in that early of an age. Right. Yeah, and for me, it was uh, my, my mother, uh, my father passed away when I was about seven, and up until that time, he was also in church. But I don't have a lot of memories of those times. Uh, but my mother uh, was active in church, and she did a lot of writing. I didn't, you know, put the two and two together until later, <laughs> you know. So, um, so, you know, she was always um, just active in church with the choir, and that was a part of my life. And I fell in love with God at an early age. Mm -hmm. um, so great. growing up, um, I was that different child. Now, I cannot say I was the, the, the one that did everything right, because that's, <laughs> not, yeah. that's not real. That's uh, not real. Yeah. <laughs> but I was that different child. I just had a sense of God, um, and it shaped my life in the way that I treated other people. Um, I was always overly concerned, I think, a lot of times. Um, I have two sisters who are much older than myself, um, and so they weren't really home. So I mm -hmm. kind of grew up like the only child. Mm -hmm. And I remember several occasions of bringing kids home with me because <laughs> I wanted to be that caretaker. And <laughs> there was a few times when my mother, when I would be like, well, Mom, can she spend the night? And Mom was like, who, are, who is it? And I'm looking back at her, what'd you say your name was again? <laughs> So, you know, as I got older, I realized that even that was ministry in me. It was, you know, just mm -hmm. the heart of God at mm -hmm. that early age and just encounters with God. And there are times when he took me back um, later in a vision and showed me, you know, um, things like I remember sitting on the floor at maybe 10 playing with dolls I cut out of a magazine or, or, or Sears and Robot catalog <laughs> <laughs> and speaking this language that I thought I had made up as a language for them and he took me back and said no that was me oh, that wow. was the Holy Ghost wow. that was mm. on your life mm. at that age and just in a wow. vision I could see him standing in the door watching this little girl playing wow. um, and that I believe was the beginning of script writing um, because I'm making up stories using these little cut out paper dolls right. um, mm -hmm. and just doing those things so um, all the way up through high school, I remember being voted, you know, they doing the who's who's and, mm -hmm. you know, mo most likely to succeed. I'm like, well, that's me. Well, I didn't win that. So, <laughs> you didn't win that one. You know, the best dress, well, that's got to be me. You know, I didn't win that. You know, and then I'm flipping through and I see most courteous 
It's like, who wants to be most courteous <laughs> at 16? <laughs> so, but I realized all of that was because of the love of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being courteous, kind, and considerate of other oh, people yes. exactly. was really sure just is. a mark of my life with Christ at that early age. So, <laughs> Well, so you were acting in school? Did you I start did. in high school? I did. Okay. I um, had no clue that it was still a part of purpose for me. Okay. Uh, but I, I did um, get started. And because my mother was doing things in church, Mm -hmm. It kind of carried over, and I had this love for acting, entertainment, uh, and I think it was a love for being seen, uh, which at that time <laughs> I thought that's what it was. <laughs> Didn't know it was a part of purpose, but uh, I thought I just liked everybody looking at me. You know? <laughs> and then when they did, I'd be like, stop looking at me. <laughs> I get those butterflies up there on the stage as one of those you know, love, hate kind of in yes. a way. You love yeah. doing it, but you get nervous every time you do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I still get butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody actually said when you stop getting butterflies, that's when you need to be concerned. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so tell us about college then. You went into college and mm -hmm. you were still serving the Lord or were you one of those people that kind of went crazy during college and then came back no, later? No, I actually didn't go crazy. Um, I was still serving the Lord and I still cannot say I did everything <laughs> right. So, <laughs> But mm -hmm. I think because of uh, the life and the purpose and the plan God had for me is that he kind of kept me away from the, you know, go crazy scene. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't like partying. I didn't mm -hmm. like, you know, alcohol. I just never liked the taste of it. I didn't like the feel. And I always wanted to be in my right mind. I always <laughs> wanted to know I'm yep. in control. Right. <laughs> Don't want nobody telling me what happened. Uh -huh. I want to know. <laughs> exactly. So, and then because of being a comedian also, I think... I was the life of the party uh, without being um, a part of partaking in everything that was going on. Um, so in college, I didn't go crazy. Um, I, you know, was curious about some things, but not that, didn't get sidetracked and <laughs> walk away from God. <laughs> so when did you step into the the comedian scene? Was that in college or in high school or just part of your nature? No, it, well, it was a part of my nature. Okay. Uh, my mom even told me at three years old um, that they would turn the television off and watch me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you were the entertainment. I was the entertainment. <laughs> but, and I had this thing, I love just making people laugh. Um, so I would do anything to make my family laugh. Um, so then after I, I didn't um, stay in college because it just wasn't rosy, it just wasn't working for me. Um, so I joined the military. Okay. And after I joined the military, it was a, a, a Black History Month, and they were doing a program. And they said, well, we got a lot of singing. We even got some dancing. We got this. We need something different. And before I know it, I'm volunteering. Like, hey, how about I dress up like an old lady and sit in this rocking chair and just tell stories? <laughs> and they're like, just tell stories. Yeah, I'll make it funny. I'm like, okay, let's do that. <laughs> oh. So I sat there with a group of kids around me mm -hmm. and just started to say funny things, you know, about black history and about life. And, and then I heard the kids laughing. I'm like, oh, they think it's funny, you know. So I was like, well, let me do this. <laughs> and then all the audience was laughing, and that was kind of the beginning. I just loved it. It's like, oh, I'm making everybody laugh. So it was great. <laughs> and then laughter is so good for the soul. Oh, yes, yeah, it, is. it is. That is so good yes, for the soul. It is. So do you feel like God at some point had told you that was your calling to make people laugh? He did. It, it came later. It came after I had, you know, um, did it for a few years. And I just remember this um, um, encounter of sitting on my living room floor. Um, I was a little bit older, had children, uh, married with children at the time, and um, was trying to figure out what to do with my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I had um, experienced a lot of things. I had actually gotten out of the military. Um, and was trying to see what's next steps. So I'm sitting on the floor and I'm talking to God. Um, I call him Daddy. I'm talking to Daddy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Daddy, what do I do now? And yeah. you know, what's what's the meaningful thing in my life? And you know, I don't want to be active and just doing something. I want to, you know, no purpose. I mm -hmm. want to know meaning. You know, yeah. so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking we're having this pretty good conversation. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, and he's gonna say something deep and revelatory. <laughs> you know, it's gonna, it's gonna change my life and I'm gonna go away and start some, you know, orphanage or. Something. <laughs> so, but he very peacefully and quietly said, you have been commissioned to make people laugh. Mm. And so I'm sitting there with my eyes closed. I'm like, okay, that wasn't God. Um, so God, daddy, what do you want me to do? You want me to go to Africa? Where you want me to go? And he says again, you're commissioned to make people laugh. And I'm just still thinking, come on, that, what kind of commission is that? You know, and this is back in the eighties. So you're thinking, People don't even think you're supposed to laugh in church. What do you mean? You know, I'm a church girl. You remember, right? <laughs> so, 
-hmm. But that um, that was the commission, and he followed that statement by saying, "My people are hurting, mm -hmm. and all they need mm -hmm. to do is laugh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a merry heart doeth good like medicine." Mm -hmm. So from that, I said, "Okay, I'm your girl. Yeah, I'm, I'm the one. I I will do it. Whatever. I will cut up an act of fool for you. I will be the <laughs> fool. <I will. laughs> for purpose, for your glory, I'll stand on my head. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great gift to have. Yeah, that, that really is, because we all need a laugh, yes, right? Yeah. And they, now do. they say the more you laugh, the younger you stay. I mean, it's, yes, there's it a is. lot connected it to laughter. So your health, yeah, your as health. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so much connected. Is. So tell us a little bit about how you be, um, was able to perform with some of the various artists that we mentioned oh, wow. at the intro. Yeah. Besides God opening doors, it, it was the comedy. Because um, when I started doing comedy close to 30 years ago, I think it was 86 or something, um, there wasn't a lot, especially of Christian comedians. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Warnke was one of my favorites. I, I loved listening to him. Um, and he helped me realize that, wow, this is a ministry. This is something I can do and be okay and not have to hide it. Um, so it wasn't a lot of comedians, Christian comedians, faith-based comedians, clean mm -hmm. comedians, whatever yeah. you know you want to <laughs> call mm -hmm. it. Um, so when things were happening um, in the big things and they wanted opening comedians, that was kind of my first shot, my door in. Um, so uh, I got known in the area with some of the radio stations and other people that were doing mm -hmm. things, other churches. Nice. So, you know, I would get calls to be the opening night. I, I stayed busy uh, from family reunions, show up and <laughs> act like you're a part of our family, <laughs> you know, so we can bring out this point, you know. Mm -hmm. so lots of family reunions and everybody's mm -hmm. trying to figure out, well, who is that? You know, what's out of the family, you know? Because I look totally different. I dress up like this old lady with the wig, everything, yeah. big pink lipstick. So, oh my gosh! <laughs> and in those days, I would never yeah. reveal my true identity. So, uh, when I was there, you thought I was that person. That person, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, I, the countless numbers of people that came up to me and talked to me, <laughs> thinking that I was a sweet old lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is just too funny. So that's how yeah. I got to work with so many people in the industry. Oh, that's cool. Yes. <laughs> well, we're gonna. We're going to switch over a little bit to okay. a more serious topic now. So tell me how Love After Life After Death came to be. Okay, that um, happened. Of course, I have to say it was God. Um, a few years ago, um, the Lord, I st felt this tug because I started noticing that suicide was on the rise. Mm -hmm. um, and I was already doing uh, plays that we call in the Love Dynasty. Um, I had started to write plays about this family mm -hmm. of uh, seven girls. Wow. Um, <laughs> seven girls. <laughs> adult girls. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point, one of the sisters was, was struggling um, after divorce, and she was struggling. Um, she had walked away from God in the story. And so her sisters, a part of the restoration plan, was God brought all of her sisters into her house at the same time. <laughs> uh, so, but it was a love, it was a love story mm -hmm. and a love story of how the love of God is that thing that rest, restores us. Because a lot of things, we, times we think it's tragedies. Mm -hmm. We think, mm -hmm. oh, when you hit the bottom, then you're gonna call on God. Oh, when it goes really, really bad. But in this story, it wasn't. She was very successful. She just was missing that relationship with God. Yeah. So love brought her there. So for about seven or eight years, we had followed this family in, uh, stage plays and webisodes and some other things we were doing. Um, and then when God was tugging at my heart about suicide and the message of suicide, I thought, hey, perfect, we'll use this family um, who our audience and other people had come to know and love to show the tragedy of loss. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how we got love, because we had to connect it to the love dynasty and then life after death, meaning she had gone, this character had gone to the brink of death and now she had to get life after that. Mm -hmm. So um, in going into the suicide uh, arena so that we could have a voice on prevention and awareness, mm -hmm. um, wrote the script for it, Love After Life After Death, uh, very surprising for the audience to find out which one of these sisters and characters actually was suicidal and none of the other families saw the signs, which is mm -hmm. what's so true mm -hmm. and what's so true, yes. Yeah, it's happened so often. Um, so it's about the family uh, rallying around one of their hurting and bleeding that they didn't notice until it was too late. Mm -hmm. um, so this is how we got there and when God first started talking to me about suicide prevention, I'm thinking, well, what do you want me to do? And what, whoever, 
I, you know, I, I, I'm a script writer. I do plays. What, what is that? Mm -hmm. um, so for about three years, I kind of didn't do anything. Uh, and then finally this year in 2015, I said, okay, God, I accept. What do you want me to do? Show us how to do this. Okay, this is something you're calling us to do. Show me how to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, little did I know <laughs> <laughs> that in saying yes to him, he was said, all right, let's go. Let's bang her home with this cannon. <laughs> you know, let's turn up the fire in the heat of her own life. So, but I did. This year has been, had been very tumultuous for me and that I experienced some things in life and loss that I hadn't before. Mm. But in it, God took me to a place where I could relate to a person mm -hmm. feeling that pressure. Now, it wasn't right. suicidal, thank God, but the pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started to understand how a person could get to that point. Um, and not to mention uh, my own, one of my sons, I have three sons, uh, some years ago as a teenager, um, we were in church one day and uh, one of the elders said, I hear God saying that someone in here is suicidal. Mm. And this was years ago. Oh, wow. um, he was saying someone is suicidal um, and it's a young person and we want you to come to the front. We want to talk with you, pray with you. And it was my son. Oh my gosh. Oh, man. Um, so I'm wow. standing at the front of the church wow. at this time. You know, I'm one of the leaders, I'm up front. I'm yeah. like, you know, I'm gonna ride, my, my life is great. You know, my <laughs> own affairs. <laughs> You know, so imagine seeing your, your child son coming up, yeah, walking up to the front, walking, being the one walking up. Wow. So I think that was my first encounter with that suicidal spirit. Wow. Um, and knowing that, hey, this is something we have to fight. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, you know, something mm -hmm. that deserves to be in the darkness. No one deserves to be there in the darkness suffering. People, this needs to be in the open so we can help each other fight and get through this. So that was kind of how all of that evolved. That um, I had my own experiences with it. Um, and even, you know, having come out of the military, mm -hmm. there's just, your thinking is just different because mm -hmm. you experience some things right. that, you know, you don't ordinarily experience mm -hmm. and it just shapes your, your thinking differently. It does. Mm -hmm. And you know what I thought was so impressive about um, the play, it's not the fact that you guys are just doing the play and it was awesome. I tell you, you guys, you guys oh, got man. me the first 30 seconds. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm, gonna, I'm in tears already. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah, so it powerful. It starts out just very powerful, right? Yes, Boom, so right powerful. Right from the beginning. It's yes. just like, it does. It got your attention. Right, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it really so you're does. just like on edge, like, okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> I know. But then the, the seriousness is there, and there's the comedy, you know, there's some laughter there. And But what I, what I love about it is the hope, the message yes. of hope, and mm -hmm. the fact that you guys have counselors there yes. after the play to be able to talk to anybody. Yes. And so um, with the audience, we're going to show you guys an 800 number, and then they'll have your mm -hmm. number as well. Mm -hmm. So if anybody is even thinking about that, because, Absolutely. you know, we do get some loneliness and pressures yes. during the holidays, um, that they can reach out to someone. Yes. Um, but I know the thing that is important is we were talking, uh, you had mentioned that especially in churches, you guys really want to get into churches yes. because it's something that's not really talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, It's a powerful um, message that people do it, need to understand. They it to. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage the audience for you guys, if you are in a church, if you are a leader in the church, to um, please reach out to Rosie, get her contact information, and to you know find out if there's a way that you can bring her into your church, mm -hmm. and for them to do the play, um, you know. And what's also unique is that you guys can customize the time. Yes. So, and I'm excited mm -hmm. that we're going to be yeah. able to tape you guys next yes. month. Yeah, <laughs> so we're going to do gonna a one-hour segment. Powerful mm -hmm. segment there. Yes, yes. yes. and so um, <coughs> so that you'll be able to because what we saw was the one-hour version of yes. the play, mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. and it was. Mm -hmm powerful again mm -hmm. you lose nothing um, and so I, I mean the two hour I can even imagine was probably you know awesome but, yeah. but the fact that we'll be able to bring it here to to show the audience that'll right. be great um, so let's talk a little bit about um, I do want to hear um, I want to talk about the myth so there's a myth that that suicide goes up during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised myself to find out when I was yeah. Googling this yeah. that that's not the case. <laughs> that's not the that case. actually December is the lowest month of the year. Mm -hmm. and But then after December, it's like a 40% uptick mm -hmm. um, from that because then you got the loneliness, people, you know, yes. everybody's gone. Yes. Um, and so people are trying to figure out what to do with themselves again. So, so I know that we need hope out there. Yes, we do. Um, there's a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's kind of interesting. I was talking to a friend about this last night. We were down in North Carolina mm -hmm. and we went to, we were staying with one of her friends and we went to church with her. And the pastor was oh. talking about security in an unsecured world mm. um, because of the, the Paris attacks. Yes. 
but the message was really on fear. Mm -hmm. And I think fear has a lot to do with the suicide. It does, Because Absolutely. again, it's the fear of, or what do people think of me? Am I gonna be able to make it? Am I gonna be a success? The, and the biggest fear is, what am I gonna do? Where's my life going? Because one of the uh, most depressing things about life is when you don't know your purpose, mm -hmm. and when you can't see your way ahead when you see no right. future, mm -hmm. when you think I'm stuck here for life. And that's the depressing thing and that's fear. Mm -hmm. uh, because fear will keep you paralyzed. You don't want to you know, go out. You don't want to do anything. I even um, almost got caught up in it myself. I, I was wanting to go to uh, Texas to visit my family for the holidays. And um, and then as I'm booking my flight, I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, what if the terrorists want to take down a plane? I don't, that's one of the biggest travel yeah. days, you know, season. Yeah, I'm not getting on a plane. And then I caught myself mm -hmm. and I thought, wait a minute. Yep. This is that spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. This yep. is, you know, I, I'm already delivered from this spirit of fear. And so I myself had to combat that thing, which is what we really have to do. You do. We yes. have to fight it. And, and that's exactly what the message is about because the terrorists, that's all they want to do is create. It's create evil. Fear. It's pure evil, yes. right? Really and the evil. enemy wants to create fear in yeah. us because he wants to keep us from our calling. He wants us to keep Absolutely. forward from going forward. Absolutely. I, I love the fact that the uh, that French gentleman that lost his wife, uh -huh. I saw that in the news, mm -hmm. where he wrote that letter and posted online and said, I will not hate you. Yes. That yeah. regardless, you will not get me. Right. I won't hate you. Absolutely. You know, and we all need to do that. We need to pray for all these um, terrorists that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I know we have a lot of soldiers, speaking of, you know, the war, um, we have a lot of soldiers committing suicide, yeah. right? And oh, absolutely. So there's a absolutely. lot of people that we have to keep in prayer during this time. Yes. Um, oh, I wanted to mention this too when I was looking, that I'm gonna read a couple statistics real quick, that um, according to studies, over 50% of undergraduates in college have committed, have considered suicide. Mm -hmm. I wow. mean, that really tells you where a younger generation is at. Absolutely. It's the, it's, it's that mentality of life is just too tough right now, so. Right, and it's I'm so many choices. It. You yeah. know, at that age, you're confronted with so many choices now um, that it's a matter of like, you get overwhelmed trying to, okay, go down this path, don't do this, don't, you know, go down. And that's, it, it becomes overwhelming on top of going to school, on mm -hmm. top of it's a life change. You're no longer in a security home with the parents. Mm -hmm. So there are so many factors. But you know what was surprising to me is that suicide is the third leading cause of death among per persons 10 to 14 years old. Absolutely. Suicide I, uh, that at is so that surprising. age. Wow. That's so and that, I had another encounter, I think it was this year too or last year, talking about me putting my hat in the ring of suicide. My son um, um, has a middle school child and this middle school one of his classmates committed suicide oh my gosh oh, wow. so the conversation came you know hey you need to talk this is the mother to my son yeah you know talk to your son because one of his classmates has committed suicide wow and to me that was the saddest thing to know an wow. 11 year old oh my gosh felt life was so tough and so depressing that they committed suicide that is that, that is, is so sad um yeah because so that was third leading cause so the second leading cause among persons ages 15 to 34. Mm -hmm. So the second leading cause, 15 to 34 years old. Well, and you know what I was surprised? It's even the se seventh, well, 17, so that's not so bad, but mm -hmm. it's still bad. It's still 65 bad. years and older. 65 you know, you would think, we would hope that by the time we got it, we got there, you know, mm -hmm. that we're, we're squared away, right? right. <laughs> we're okay with life, but yeah, we're not. We know what life's right. about. Yeah, but what happens in that wow. age group is they, so a lot of time it's illness, Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be a burden on their children. Oh, true. They don't want to be a burden on someone else. True. So they think that the world is better off without them. They think everybody would be better off without them. So it's like every phase wow. of life, right? Every phase of life there's, is a different reason. There's a different reason. Mm -hmm. So I want to read Romans 12:12 12, 12, um, to the audience because I want to leave you guys with hope. All right, so we're going into the holiday season. Things may get a little overwhelming. You know, things get crazy during the holidays. They're also a joyful time, right? It's a great time to spend time with family. So I yep. encourage you, if you're even thinking about suicide at all, please, please, please reach out to somebody because it is never bad as you think, right? Your mind has a right. way of persuading you, but this is not truth. That is a lie, all right? There is hope in God. He is always there for you, and he will always always bring you out of it, okay, if you yes, trust yeah. in Him. So Romans 12, 12 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. 
All right, so please do that. And I think, David, you wanted to read one too? Yes, it's Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you. I declare the Lord plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you future and to give you hope. Exactly. And you know, and that's what the New Year's all about, right? Yes. We're going yes. into New Year's and it's like, okay, we're going to do that diet again. <laughs> you know, we're going we're gonna, to, the things I didn't do last year, I'm going to, I'm going to get my bills paid. Uh, you right. know, it's, it's a fresh start. And I'm going to stay at peace. Even if I can't get those things done all at once, I'm going to be okay with that. Exactly. Be okay because, that. you know, that's one thing yep. people forget that God does not always take you out of the storm, but he will give you peace during the storm. Absolutely. Right. So he's there for you. So, um, Rosie, I have enjoyed talking to you so much Thank today. You so much for being here. Yes. So Thank it was you. great having you here, and I'm excited about next week, next next show. Yeah. <laughs> right. Next show, so we can next have you will on. Be the show. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and I just want to give out the number real quick for the National Suicide Hotline. It is 1-800-273-8255. So. Our time is up, and we hope that you have enjoyed today's segment with our guest, Miss Rosie Rogers. Please join us on our next segment to see a shortened version of Love After Life After Death. I want to wish you all a very happy and safe holiday season. And David and I will see you next time. And remember, until then, keep it real. <laughs>